which probably each one of us take, which would put each one of us into a depression the moment we hear the word. And that word is discipline. But when I am going to explain to you, when you understand what actually you will mean by discipline, then probably you will be able to appreciate why your parents discipline is willingly doing what is supposed to be done at the right time. And with your hundred percent trust, even after six o'clock, even after seven o'clock would feel that this is something which I do not like and yet I am forced to get up either by my parents or somebody else at six o'clock each morning. Now the advantage of getting up at six o'clock in the morning is you will have enough time for your exercise, you will have, have enough time to get ready, you will have enough time to leisurely come to your bus stop, you will have enough time to get to school, you will have enough time to concentrate on what you are being helped to learn. Now instead of 6 o'clock, if you have to get up at 6 or if you have to get up at 7 o'clock, you miss your exercise, then your mind and body will become the last. And you would have to rush through everything that you have to do before you reach school. Probably take a bath in a hurry, eat your breakfast in a hurry or visit out to dinner, run to the bus stop because the bus is not going to wait for you. Rush to the school because the school is going to start at a specific time and you have to be there prior to that. Finish of the assembly, rush through everything, and by the time you get back home, you will not be in a pleasant mood and your body and mind will both be tired. So, discipline again and repeat is doing everything that is to be done in a proper manner at the proper time which will help us lead a much pleasant life. And discipline is the pillar of life of every human being. So discipline doesn't only mean you have to do that or you have to don't do this, you have to abstain from doing this or you are free to do that. Because discipline is something which inculcates in you the feeling and the habit of doing the right things at the right time in the right frame of mind so that you are feeling happy and pleasant throughout the And discipline is not just doing things on time, it is doing everything on time at a proper place in the right manner. And what I mean by this is there are a lot of things that are do's and don'ts in a human life and each of us live in a society. So, as the society has a rule, there are certain regulations that we have made for ourselves or our ancestors have made for us which say that you do certain things which will cause you good and you do certain things which are going to be bad for you and bad for the society. So, for instance, you have been taught or you have been told that it is bad to cheat at a reservation. Now that is the regulation of the society. Now if you start thinking that I don't feel it is wrong to cheat at a reservation, as long as I am sure that nobody else knows what I am doing. Now to an extent, you are right. But then, your discipline and your ethics do not mean that you can cheat or cheating is alright as long as you are not wrong. Cheating is something which you should not do on your own. But you should be ashamed that if not anybody else, I know that I am not being fair. So examinations are a system of evaluation, not just for you, but for 
every other student of the same class or the same school to test what you have done is remembered by you in the manner it has to be done. There are certain things probably that we keep promising in life. Feel that we have been taught certain things or we have learned certain, certain things which are unnecessary, which we do not use in life at all. But for example, there is a word called a dozen. And we have been taught that dozen consists of a set of twelve objects. When you go to a fruit store, you can either say that I have come here to purchase 12 apples or I have come here to purchase a dozen apples which both be the same. So you can probably use either of these terms to express what you want, the number that you want. If you were not taught or if you were not learned that doesn't mean 12, then you would left with only one choice that whenever you want 12 apples, you say I need 12 apples. If somebody says, uh, do you need a dozen apples, you will not be able to understand what dozen apples. Similarly, in all walks of life, there are certain things that we learn. For instance, there are certain formulas in mathematics which may seem very complex now and which we may feel may not be used at all in life to probably help you understand certain other things in life much more easier than if you had not learned this problem. And that, my friends, is the crux of education. It is not necessary that what you learn today, you are able to use it today or else, you know, that's the least. By learning things, what you are doing is, if I learn certain things today, if not today, they are going to be open to me somewhere in my life. Somewhere where I need to explain myself more clearly. Somewhere probably I need to help the next generation understand what this means. So if I am not understanding what this means, I will probably not be able to make anybody else understand what I have got. And that again my friends is the crux of education and this depends on discipline. So discipline is not being forced to do what you do not want to do or what you do not like to do. Discipline is for everything there is a certain place, certain time, certain manner in which we ought to go. And if we are able to make it a habit in everything that we, we do, then probably life will become more easy. There are certain things in human life which nobody would have taught us or nobody would teach us. Again, for instance, the fetus starts living in the womb of a mother much before it sees the physical world. A fetus without being specifically taught by anybody learns how to inhale and exhale. Because without anybody saying the fetus state and the fetus state itself the human being understands that if it doesn't inhale air or exhale air continuously then you will definitely die. So these are certain things which nature teaches us or which we probably attribute it to the invisible Lord Almighty teaches us. So like this there are a lot of things which circumstances force us to learn. And that is where education comes. That is where I say is what education means. And that is what I your SP school, we have been trying to invite you to. So our objective is not to teach you the alphabet. Our objective is not help you to learn what the textbooks say. Our objective is not to ensure that you set up a pass rate in your examinations and move forward each year. Our objective is to ensure that along with this, we also have to learn certain things which are going to be more useful and more practical in life. And once, as a human being, it is set in our minds that without discipline, 
life would become different, then without anybody demanding us, without anybody telling us, we will get accustomed to doing the right things in the right place at the right time. Wishing you all the very best in life and thank you for being a part of SPS. And please remember that we are there for you throughout your life, whether you are a present student of this school, or you are an alumni of this school, or you are a present or future student of any of the institutions of this So our relationship with you, your relationship with SPS is at whatever point of time in your life, you find or you feel that you need our help, we are always there to help you with whatever problem you have. Again, we see you all the very